I teased this in the Malaysia Full Wiley video a while back. I said there was a player in the 2024 class that was criminally underrated. The person I was talking about was Toby Fournier. Toby Fournier is currently the ninth ranked recruit in the class. I've been sitting on this for a while, but the more I watch her play, I have no idea what ESPN is thinking. I believe Toby Fournier will be the best player in the 2024 class. At worst, she'll be top three. I haven't felt this strongly about a recruit since Juju and Hannah Hidalgo. There's not a single player that can do all the things that Toby Fournier does in this recruiting class, and there's very few people that can in general. There are some extremely talented players in the class, and I will talk about them in the offseason just like I did last year. But I wanted to talk about Toby a bit earlier. Even as a freshman next year, Toby Fournier will dominate. I think teams will heavily regret not recruiting Toby harder, and I think Kara Larson hit the jackpot. It's ironic Toby went to Duke, because she plays a lot like Zion Williamson. Play style wise, he is the most similar player to Toby Fournier, because there's not a single women's basketball player who plays like Toby. Zion looked like a grown man playing kids in college. Toby will have the same impact, especially when ACC play starts. But what exactly makes Toby Fournier special? She has generational athleticism. She can dunk, which will be great for the growth of women's basketball. But it's not just the fact she can dunk. It's the fact she's 6'2 and has ridiculous mobility. It's not like she's some super tall player doing rim grazers. She's out here doing reverse dunks and back scratchers. But most importantly, she uses her athleticism to fuel every part of her game. She's 6'2", but moves like a guard. The first thing that will stick out when you watch Toby is her defense. This is what really separates Toby from everyone else. There's no shortage of people in this class that can score the basketball, but Toby is by far the most impressive defensively. It would be difficult to find players from any class that put the type of defensive pressure on the opposing team that Toby does. With her size, mobility, and athleticism, she can reliably guard any position on the court. This makes switching defenders with a pick and roll effectively useless. She's both a great on-ball and off-ball defender, and she is a blocking machine. She casually gets multiple blocks per game, and in college this will continue. And In fact, she blocks so many shots, many times the opposing player will just pass the ball out. She is similar to Cameron Brink or Camila Cardoso. When they aren't blocking the shot, the shot gets altered into a low percentage shot, and this is what separates good defenders from elite defenders. Anyone can make a shot blocking mixtape, but the defenders that understand they don't need to try to block every shot to force a bad look puts them in a different category. Like Cameron and Cardoso, Toby Fournier will be the type of defender where the coach shakes their head when someone tries to score on her. There are many cases where Fournier turns her defense into offense. Her length and athleticism allows her to get several steals, which turns into fast breaks. Her blocked shots can lead into transition baskets as well. The scary part is, Duke is a defensive-minded team, which means Kara Lawson will maximize Fournier on that side of the ball. A sophomore version of Jaden Donovan and freshman Toby will be one of the scariest defensive tandems in the league. Duke is already one of the best defensive teams in basketball, and with the ability Toby brings, they'll easily be top three. Given her current abilities and the fact she will be playing at Duke, Toby will mostly shine on the defensive end, but she is just as capable on offense, and there isn't really a women's basketball player to properly compare her offensive game to. I think the most similar is Cody McMahon. It's not the perfect comparison because Toby is taller and more athletic, while Cody is noticeably stronger. But in terms of ball handling, aggressiveness, having a signature spin move, and driving ability, they have a lot in common. Toby is most dangerous when she's driving to the rim, but she has a very capable back-to-the-basket game. She has incredible footwork, and when you combine that with her athleticism, she's hard to stop. She uses her size to finish on smaller guards that switch on her. On bigger players, she uses her footwork and jumping ability to score on top of them. Toby is also great at moving off the ball. She sets a ton of screens and is able to get easy baskets by cutting to the basket. Another thing that will stick out is how many fouls she draws. She's similar to Juju Watkins and Hannah Hidalgo in this way. People can't guard them, so they just start whacking them. You are going to see Toby Fournier take a lot of free throw attempts when she gets in college. I don't know if I've ever seen a high school player fouled as much as Toby Fournier. It's honestly ridiculous how much she gets fouled. I'm shocked the other team still has players, because it's that bad. Earlier I mentioned her driving ability. This will be Toby's bread and butter in college. Outside of fouling, it's very rare to see her get stopped on the drive. As soon as she gets downhill, it's over. She's too tall, she's too fast, she can jump too high. It's simple but effective. It's not just the athleticism that makes her so dangerous on the drive. It's the fact she moves like a guard. She is able to do in and out dribbles, crossovers, and spin moves. She has a soft touch at the rim. 
Toby Fournier is also a tenacious rebounder. Zion Williamson has a very quick second jump, which is why people can't keep him off the boards. Angel Reese also has this ability, which is why she's able to get so many rebounds, even in situations where it doesn't look like she's in position to get it. Toby Fournier has the same ability. It's not something you can teach. You either have it or you don't, and she has it. Toby has immense talent, but just like everyone else, she has weaknesses. One of them being is she has no jump shot whatsoever. Toby is so good at other things that she'll be able to dominate without having a jump shot, but it's definitely something she will need to work on to play professionally. I think Toby's free throw shooting will hurt way more than her not being able to hit jump shots, because very few people will be able to stay in front of her anyway. But her free throw shooting will be a massive hindrance in her path to greatness. She will get sent to the free throw line just as much as Juju Watkins and Hannah Hidalgo. But the major difference is that Juju and Hidalgo will punish you. Toby will not. That needs to be her number one priority in terms of player development. In late game situations, she will have a similar problem as Giannis. Toby Fournier is not someone you give the ball to in late game situations and expect her to put the game away because they'll either pack the paint or foul her, which means Duke will have to find someone to be the closer late in games. I went over her strengths and weaknesses in her high school game. But why exactly am I so confident in Toby Fournier? It's because she's not just playing your average high school competition. She plays at Crestwood Prep, which plays the toughest prep schools in the country. And she's dominating. Not only that, she is a back-to-back -back MVP for the Canadian BioSteel All-Star Game, an event with the best Canadian players in the country. And she hasn't even played as a senior in the event yet. In the Nike Hoop Summit, she dominated Team USA on both ends of the floor. The USA team is full of players who are giving the NCAA buckets right now. She was the best player in the under-19 FIBA tournament. She was second in efficiency per game, first in rebounds, seventh in points per game, and third in blocks. By the way, she was only 17 at the time. Her athleticism isn't just good for high school. It's probably more than any player in the WNBA currently. South Carolina is the only team I think has players that could potentially have a higher vertical leap. These factors are why I don't understand why there are eight players ranked over Toby. It's not any disrespect to them, Toby is just built different. As always, I'm gonna give projections on how I think her career will turn out. Toby Fournier is one of those rare players where I think she will look even better in college than high school. Because in high school, she's playing out of position. She's used as a center just because she's tall. But when you watch her in the Nike Hoop Summit or international play, she's moved to the forward position and she looks even more dominant. Hopefully Kara Larson uses her this way. I'm reluctant to say she'll be an All-American her freshman year because there's a possibility a bunch of the class of 2020 players will stay an extra year, which would take a ton of spots. But I think she will be an All-ACC player, All-Defensive player, and handedly win ACC Freshman of the Year. Toby Fournier is good enough to make at least two All-American first teams in her career, and I think she will enter the National Player of the Year conversation during her upperclassmen years. Mark my words, Toby Fournier is the best player in the 2024 class. A year from now, this won't be a hot take. Toby Fournier's highlights and face will be everywhere. When she gets her first dunk, it will be like when Full Wiley hit that crazy move in Paris. She will get major media attention. I think we will see a great rivalry between Toby Fournier and Hannah Hidalgo in the ACC. I could very easily see them being the number one and two player in the ACC for years to come. If you like this video, there will be more incoming freshman breakdowns this offseason. In the meantime, there will be videos about the players and games currently going on in college. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.